Hello and welcome to my video lecture on uh, the chapter two future value calculator, which for all intents and purposes takes everything uh, that we've learned uh, in chapter two and applies it in an application. Uh, so we can see how it all works. Uh, so here we've got uh, the first page of the future value uh, calculator. Uh, as you can see here, if you enter all the values uh, and you would click calculate, um, you're going to get uh, the proper results, all right? So um, if you don't, uh, the next slide shows you that uh, you're going to get an error message, right? So let's see how that works. Uh, if I go to the future value calculator, right? And, and so we, we've just developed an application, say, and one of the first things we're going to do when we're testing is we're just going to click calculate, right? Just to see, well, you know, now we have a, a user um, that, uh, you know, click calculate not knowing what was going to happen. So here we want to uh, hit the user uh, or display for the user uh, an error message. Uh, later on, we can get more complicated and show all three of these error messages. But in this case, so far in this application, we're just going to show the user that uh, the investment must be a valid number because it's the first value that we're looking for. Um, so if I put in something like 10 thousand and I click calculate, 10,000 uh, with a dollar sign is not a valid number. So let's see if we try, again, this is all part of testing, calculate with the comma is not a valid number, right? So we need a number that doesn't have um, any commas, right? right? Number signs is just a valid number. Uh, so we may want to, you know, put over here, you know, a little example of what a number would look like, right? Uh, just so the user knows um, so let's put in an interest rate, so say I put in 7.5% uh, and click calculate. Again, the interest rate must be a valid number, so that 7.5% uh, isn't going to work. Um, so say I put in 7.5, right? Uh, and I click calculate, and now it tells me that the years must be a valid whole number. Um, so again, if I put in 2.5, that's not a, a valid number. And notice that every time I click calculate, if there's a bad value, it's wiping out that value for me. Uh, so for instance, if I put in two years, right, and I click calculate, it tells me the interest rate, right? So if I put in 7.5%, uh, um, it leaves all of the valid ones and only wipes out the ones that are invalid. Let's make this 25 years, and we'll make this 7.5%, and click calculate, and as you can see, now it works fine. So now let's see the code in the background that's using things like if statements uh, and some of the built-in functions to do what we want uh, this application to do. So I'm going to start off uh, looking at uh, some of the code in um, the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation, only because it has the highlight, right? Um, the first PHP code snippet, right? A uh, little script that's up here it sets the default uh, value of variables for the initial page load. Uh, so as you can see, what the author has here are one line if statements. We're not used to seeing these. Um, so again, if I, uh, if I open up NetBeans, uh, which might take a moment or two to actually load. So we'll see. Yeah, that's taking a second to load. So let's just continue on with our PowerPoint presentation while that means loads. So uh, this is a one-line statement, right? One-line if statement. So the if is testing to see uh, if the investment variable uh, is not set, which is, uh, this is how you do that. So you have the bang operator, which nots the is set. Uh, so if the investment is not set, uh, we're setting the investment variable equal to an empty string. And we're doing the same thing for the interest rate, and we're doing the same thing for years. So let's do this. So now uh, NetBeads is open. Uh, if we go into our Chapter 2 Future Value uh, project, I've already set this uh, using uh, the run and setting the main project to uh, the Chapter 2 Future Value. If I click to run that, all right, it's going to load it up, and there it is. All right. So we were just running that a few minutes ago. So let's take a look at the index.php file. Um, again, we can change this to make it look a little bit more uh, the way we're used to seeing it. All right, so this is more of what we're used to seeing, right, with uh, an if statement on multiple lines. You can do it on one line. All right, that's really just all that I'm, I'm showing you there. 
Um, the rest of this, right, we've got our, our, uh, our HTML5 uh, header, starts off with the HTML tag, we've got our header section, then we've got our body section, uh, we've got a main section used uh, primarily for uh, the cascading style sheet for styling, uh, we've got our header, uh, and then we've got some PHP code, right, so here's some, uh, a little PHP uh, code snippet denoted here with the PHP, so here we're, we're, we're doing a test. Right, uh, and notice that here's our, our, our um, curly brace, and then here's our curly brace, and in between that, we've got HTML code. Right, notice that this ends the PHP. Right, so this is the end of that PHP, but it continues down here, and in between there is HTML. So this HTML is only going to run if the error message is empty. Right, so the error message, if, if it's empty, uh, we're going to uh, include this uh, HTML, which in itself also has a little PHP code in it uh, that's going to uh, run the error message through the HTML special characters. Okay, um, so now we've got our form. Right? Our form is going is to use the display results PHP and it's going to use the post method. Um, we're going to we have our uh, little divider uh, with an ID for data. Uh, which is going to be used by our cascading style sheet. Got our investment amount. Um, here we're running all of our variable uh, values through the HTML special cares function, uh, which is uh, best practices uh, for now. Now let's go back and take uh, a little look. So that, that's really uh, this highlighted section of the index PHP file is really where uh, we're doing our checking and then um, Again, we're, running, we're using our HTML special cares to test our variables to make sure that we're not getting any uh, core site scripting going on. And then we have our display results file. So let's take a look at that and that beans. So here's our display results. So here again, uh, we're using best practices. Uh, we're taking our uh, values that were entered uh, and we are not accessing uh, the super global uh, arrays directly, uh, but we're using the filter input function to do that. Uh, these are all coming out of the uh, super global post array. These are the uh, uh, variable names, and uh, we're validating this to be a good float number, this to be a good float number, and this to be a valid int, right? Uh, so all of the filter inputs are going to do those validations for us, and if those validations work, those values are going to get put into uh, our local variables, right? So we've got our little comment up here uh, to say that we're getting data from the form. Then we're going to validate the investment. So we've got a couple of different sections here, uh, and I'm just going to uh, do some uh, add in some white space to actually see these. So here we're validating investment. So here we're checking to see if uh, investment is exactly equal to false. In chapter two, we didn't go over the exactly equals. Uh, we just did the comparison operator, the two equals. So in this case, we're looking for it to be exactly equal to false. And it will be exactly equal to false if the filter input doesn't get a valid float. So if it, if it doesn't validate as, as a float, uh, investment is going to be exactly equal to false, in which case we're going to set up, uh, we're going to set the error message uh, variable uh, equal to investment must be a valid number, okay? Else, if investment is less than or equal to zero, right? Again, um, we're going to uh, set the, uh, uh, the error message saying that the investment must be greater than zero, right? Um, and we didn't test that with a negative number, but you see uh, where that's going. Uh, so here we've got uh, the same thing going on. Um, and again, our end brace is here, or end curly brace is here. Uh, so here's our else if, and we're looking for interest rate now. So again, if interest rate was not a valid float, it would have uh, become a false, and then we could tell the user that the interest rate must be a valid number. And again, if it's negative, the interest rate must be greater than zero. Uh, here we're validating years in much the same way. We're checking to see if it's, it's exactly equal to false in case the uh, filter input uh, validation for an integer failed. Uh, then that would be a false. Uh, we're checking to see if, it, if it's zero or um, less than zero or negative. And then we're checking to see if it's greater than 30 years. And then we're just telling the user that it has to be uh, less than 31. 
uh, years. Um, and then here we're sending the error message to an empty string of no valid, uh, no invalid entries. So there's our error message is going to be set equal to zero. So in here, if error message is not equal to an empty string, that means uh, the error message, some error criteria uh, was true up here. So we, uh, error message got set. Uh, so here we're checking to see if the error message is not equal to an empty string. If it is, what we're going to do is we're going to use our include uh, function, which we learned in chapter two, uh, to pass control back to the index PHP uh, file. And right here, this is where our exit or, or die could go, which would cause this script to end. So nothing after this would get executed and we would just get passed right back to the index PHP file, which would then run. So that's why you see here up at the top, one of the things that we're doing is we're checking to see if there was an error message. And if there was an error message, we're going to put that error message on uh, this form, uh, this screen. If not, then we have to calculate the future value. So we're going to use a, a for loop, right? And we're going to loop through for however many years. And we're going to loop through, we're going to calculate uh, using the interest rate and the future value uh, to calculate our future value. We're going to do some formatting. We're going to use the number format. Uh, to set this equal to uh, to format this so it's two decimal places so that the investment is the investment underscore f is going to be two place two decimal places future value underscore f is going to be set equal to a dollar sign and then the future value with two decimal places and then the interest rate formatted or underscore f is going to be set equal to interest rate concatenated with a percent sign and then what we're going to do is we're going to display that using some HTML. And that's what that's uh, that's how this all works. That's how this brings together uh, all of the functionality that we've learned uh, in chapter two, all right? And then this is just some highlighted text so you can see it. Uh, so we're we're echoing out the investment F or the year rate F or the years or the future value F. All right. Uh, so that uh, is going to end uh, my video presentation on. Uh, kind of bringing together uh, everything we learned uh, in Chapter 2 and the Chapter 2 Future Value um, Calculator.